Zionism is the concept that God gave the land of Canaan to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's natural descendants on an unconditional basis. Zionists say that the Jews have an absolute right to dwell in the land. They essentially claim that the Jews have a birthright to the land, which is not conditioned on their obedience to God. The plain testimony of God's word proves that this concept is a lie. I hope no one who hears this would in their right mind ever teach their children that if they ever failed to pay the rent to their landlord and were subsequently kicked out of the house, that they would have a right to invade the house afterwards, drive out the subsequent occupants, and kill them if they would not leave, even if some questionable organization of human authority told them it was okay. And this is exactly what the modern Israeli Jews have done to the Arabs. If you believe the Bible, you must acknowledge that the Jews were kicked out of Canaan by God for not paying their rent, i.e. not bringing forth righteous fruit, even to the point of rejecting even to the point of rejecting their Messiah and the great light which shone among them through him. Matthew 21 verses 33 to 44 proves this. Who gave them the right to come back to the land in mass? The fact that they even attempted to do so just shows the enormity of their rebellion, let alone the fact that they violently killed and drove out most of the inhabitants of the land while yet violently oppressing the others to this day. What example are you setting to your own children by supporting modern Israel? You are teaching them an entitlement mentality, as if their heritage, as if their heritage puts them above the laws of God and man. It's been claimed that God gave the land of Canaan unconditionally to Abraham's descendants. Yet this is exactly what the false prophets who seduced Israel and strengthened their hands in lawless deeds claim. Ezekiel 33 verses 24 to 29. Son of man, they that inhabit those wastes of the land of Israel speak, saying, Abraham was one, and he inherited the land. But we are many. The land has given us for inheritance. Wherefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, ye eat with the blood, and lift up your eyes toward your idols, and shed blood. And shall ye possess the land? Ye stand upon your sword, ye work abomination, and ye defile every one his neighbor's wife. And shall ye possess the land? Say thou thus unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, as I live, surely they that are in the waste shall fall by the sword. And him that is in the open field will I give to the beast to be devoured. And they that be in the forts and in the caves shall die of the pestilence. For I will lay the land most desolate, and the, and the pomp of her strength shall cease. And the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, that none shall pass through. Then shall they know that I am the Lord, when I have laid the land most desolate, because of all their abominations which they have committed. God had already warned the following in the law. Leviticus chapter 18, verses 24 to 30. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own, of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land, spew, that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the, the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. As Leviticus 20, verses 22 and 23. Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them, that the land whither I bring you to dwell therein spew you, spew you not out. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. Look at how Joshua then faithfully reiterated this lesson to Israel shortly before his death in Joshua chapters 23 and 24. And he indeed included the land itself as something which would be taken from them if they were not obedient to God to yield the fruit of righteousness, which he set them apart as a people to obtain from them. Reading from Joshua chapter 23, verses 14 to 16. And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. And ye know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spoke concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath, hath failed thereof. 
Therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things, until he have destroyed you from off this good land, which the Lord your God hath given you. When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods, and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled, be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land, which he hath given unto you. However proponents of Zionism try to justify it, those who oppose Zionism have God's own words, like the formerly, the formerly quoted scriptures, and several other scriptures in which God expressly says that the Jews have not received the land unconditionally. And because of that, they are, they are now illegal invaders in the land and oppressors to the Arabs. They are really no better and often much worse than the illegal invaders in the United States, who are also wicked and need to repent. And no one can be a faithful Christian while justifying them and are being in fellowship with those who justify them either. The Zionists who have taken over Israel are Korahs, Dathans, Abirams, Caiaphases, Judases, etc. Jesus Christ was no more welcome among them in 1948 and is no more welcome in Israel now than he and his faithful servants were in biblical times. I dare say he's even welcome, he's even less welcome now than he was in biblical times. Modern Israel is probably the most openly Christ hating country on earth to this day in terms of its government and its overall spirit. How many countries would even discuss making it blatantly illegal to speak about Jesus as, a, as modern Israel has been speaking of? And probably the only reason this doesn't happen there is because many in Israel's, in Israel's government want to keep a good face for its Western financial, financial backers. And no wonder that such legislation is discussed. Since modern Israel is called Sodom and Egypt spiritually in Revelation 11.8, God never gave the land of Canaan to the Jews for any other purpose than that his faithful worship would be carried out there. To say that God is with the Jewish nation now and sides with them against the Arabs is ridiculous, and I dare say it is blasphemous too. Christians should also oppose Zionism because Zionism should be opposed regardless of how the Arabs have reacted as they have faced mass displacement and had the land which they lawfully possessed seized. Even though the Arabs, many of them, have been far from angels, the Jews have acted like utter devils in this. If they had not been the instigators, this would be a non-topic. One has to wonder how the Zionists could not fear God to the point where they would actually displace people from land which was lawfully acquired. The scriptures which they claim to believe, many now don't even claim to believe the Jewish scriptures, Thus, but the scriptures which the Jews have historically claimed to believe give many warnings about theft and about overall trampling on the rights of, other, of others. Lamentations chapter 3 verses 35 and 36. To turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High, to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approveth not. Jeremiah 22 13. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness, and his chambers by rhyme, that useth, that useth his neighbor's service without wages, and giveth him not for his work. Those who do so much as justify and or support Zionism, and modern Israel better beware them. Psalm 50, verses 16 to 18. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee? When thou sawest a thief, like the modern, like modern Israel and the Zionists collectively are, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. This is that serious then. You could really go to hell for supporting Zionists and their theft and their oppression of the Arabs. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 23 to 25. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect to persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor him. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Proverbs seventeen fifteen. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. There have even been many Arab Christians driven out of their homes and killed by the Jews. Some will say that the Arabs in Israel ought to just go back to the country that their ancestors have come from. That is an elitist thing to say. Try applying that logic to any other group of people who lawfully inhabit a land. Imagine being told that the former inhabitants of the land you live in, who were driven out a multitude of centuries ago, want to come back. So you must now move back to the place that your ancestors left left centuries earlier themselves. 
that is insane. This logic is impossible to carry out to its logical end. It is impossible to justly arbitrate, and nobody wouldn't be outraged if such a thing were said regarding themselves in their present living arrangement. To say such about the Arabs giving place to the Jews is essentially a statement implying that Jews are inherently more important than Arabs and ought to be treated as superior to them. No one should tolerate such a morally hideous thought and expect to be deemed a righteous person by God. Some will say that we should support Zionism because Israel becoming a nation and the Jews coming back to the land in mass is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. I don't believe that, but even if it were true, then maybe we should applaud and justify the people who crucified Christ too, because they were definitely fulfilling biblical prophecy in doing that. It is not man's job to try to fulfill biblical prophecy regarding the future. And those who do evil which fulfills biblical prophecy are certainly still evil. Evil is evil. Should we support all evil because the Bible says that evil will abound in the last days? Of course not. To think that the Arabs, and and, even, and, and we've talked about um in previous studies, especially the concise study on the true Israel, which isn't too far back, why um why the prophecies about um a future restoration of Israel are not promises to unbelieving Jews and why they do not apply um to Jews who reject Jesus Christ. To think that the Arabs in general should have given up their land to wicked Jews because that supposedly is aligning with God's promise of the land to Abraham C is ridiculous. Thinking such a thing is contradicting scripture itself and its inspired writers who warn the Jews not to say within themselves that they are Abraham's descendants and who warned the Jewish nation of destruction and displacement if it continued in its obstinance to God's word. And along those lines, supporting Israel is essentially stating that time in itself takes away sin. It is basically stating that God will overlook a person's sins eventually, even if they continue in them and don't repent. How else could you support Israel now while confessing if you believe the Bible you must confess that the destruction of the Jewish nation and the scattering of the Jews centuries ago was God's judgment upon them. So to to think that God's now letting them back into the land like he's saying, oh, it's okay now. Your ancestors dealt treacherously against me and, and crucified my son. And no, you haven't learned your lesson. You're not sorry. You continue to practice manifold sins. And you'd crucify your Messiah in a heartbeat again if you could. But just come on back anyways. And while you're at it, just trample on the rights of those Arabs standing in your way who have lawfully acquired the land. Don't mind them. They don't matter. That is absolutely that is absolutely ridiculous. And it's blasphemous to think that that God is on the side of modern Israel. And if you think that and if you think that He is, you basically are are saying that time in itself takes away sin. That is a hideous antichrist doctrine. Some say that being opposed to Zionism aligns one with wickedness on the left, since the political left is generally much more opposed to Zionism than the political right is. Yet a broken clock is right twice a day. To be a faithful, honest judge, you must judge the broken clock to be right and agree, and agree with it for two minutes of the day while disagreeing with it the other 1,438 minutes. We should not have partiality. The case set forth here is that not having partiality means opposing Zionism and standing up in a lawful manner for those whom the Zionists have oppressed. And besides, in advocating and or defending Zionism, one is aligning with some of the most wicked false teachers in the realm of professing Christianity, especially prosperity gospel teachers who teach that gain equals godliness, and dispensationalist teachers who teach that wicked Jews are in covenant with God, and who also teach the wicked unconditional eternal security doctrine. Did not God himself see to it that the Jews were driven out of the land? Who gave them the right to come back? Imagine the prodigal son going back to his father's house, ask, acting like he had never really done much wrong, and acting like he was entitled to come back whenever he wanted. Only in, the, only in the Jews' case it is worse, because they were driven out of the land by God's judgment. The prodigal son left his father's house willingly. Do not the Zionist Jews in modern Israel blaspheme Jesus Christ. Consider how improper supporting Zionism is, and how 
just utterly wicked supporting Zionism is seeing that these things are so. Second Chronicles chapter 19 verses 1 and 2 say, And Jehoshaphat the king of Judah returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu the son of Hanani the seer went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest, shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Therefore I will not have spiritual fellowship with anyone who does not renounce modern Israel's right to, to the land which they stole from the Arabs. Israel's oppression of the Arabs in the land continues. If you want to say that Israel has a right to exist as a nation, on the 6% of Palestine which the Jews owned as of 1947, or on land which the Arabs agree to let them have, then I don't have a controversy with you for that. Otherwise, you are supporting theft, mass oppression, and much sin overall. God warned in Scripture that those who afflict the widow and the orphan will not be spared from his wrath. And those who support policies and actions which logically promote and justify such affliction being caused are partakers with those who cause it. I must totally separate from spiritual fellowship with these, lest I be guilty too. And you ought to as well.